So here we're looking at an oligopoly market structure. You know an oligopoly is where we just have a few firms. There's pretty significant barriers to entry. We also assume that there is perfect knowledge in this industry as well. So, note, Coca-Cola's price is $3. Let's say that our firm here is Pepsi. Now, as long as we're below the price that Coke is setting, our demand is going to be more inelastic. So, again, if I've got price here and if I've got quantity here. So, let's say that we were setting a price of $2. And then we raised it to $2.50, then to $2.75, then to $2.95, then to $2.99. We could raise up, Pepsi could raise up their price as long as it's below Coke's price and they wouldn't see a significant number of people stop buying their product. They raise up their price if they're still cheaper than Coke, people are still going to buy Pepsi's product. So as long as we're below Coke's price, our demand is going to be more inelastic. That is, price goes up and up and up and people are still buying the same quantity as long as we're below Coke's $3 price. Once we go over Coke's price, if we start to charge 301, 302, 303, then people are going to stop buying our product. There will be a drastic decrease in the quantity that people are buying. So demand above Coke's $3 price is going to be more elastic, like this. So mathematically, this is our price line, it's our average revenue line, and it's also our demand line. The way that it works out mathematically also is that marginal revenue is going to trail this and it's going to be twice as deep. So marginal revenue, which can also go negative, would look something like that. There would be a gap in between. Now let's say that we also want to look at marginal cost and we also want to look at average total cost. Those things take the same uh, slope no matter what, um, or they take the same shape no matter what the industry is. So marginal cost looks something like this. I'm putting it in blue because it's one of those curves that always, virtually always has the same shape. I'm also going to put in average total cost. Average total cost has more of a parabola. The, the bottom part of average total cost is where it crosses with marginal cost. The other thing that stays the same no matter what the industry is when we're talking about the quantity and price that the firm should set, we always look for where MR equals MC. Here's where MR equals MC. Trace down, I find the quantity that the firm will want to produce that will maximize their profits. From that MR and MC spot, we can trace up to the price line to find the price that they should charge. We can also find the profit by finding the difference between average revenue and average total cost. So I trace up from where MR equals MC, I trace up to where it hits ATC, and I can trace over. Trace up to where it hits average revenue, and I can trace over. So it forms this box, which I'm going to shade in in pink here. That's the gap between average revenue and average total cost. So this pink area here represents the profit of the business.